Well, joining me now to discuss the conflict in Israel and Gaza is a TV host and satirist, Bassam Youssef. Uh, Bassam, it's uh, great to have you back on the programme. I wish it was under different circumstances. Um, first of all, what is your reaction to what happened on October the 7th? Oh, it was terrible, of course. I mean, we kind of get our news kind of also secondhand because, you know, my, my wife's family, they live in Gaza. They actually have uh, cousins and uncles there. Um, and uh, their house also was bombed. We haven't been able to communicate with them for the past three days. Communication are lost. So uh, we don't know actually what is the, uh, how, is they, how are they doing, but you know, we're used to that. I mean, it's it just like, it's, it's, it's very repetitive. We're used to that. We're used to them being bombed every time and moving from one place to the other. Uh, you know, it's just like those Palestinians, they're very dramatic. Ah, Israel killing us. Uh, but they never die. I mean, they always come back. You know, they, they are very difficult to kill, <laughs> very difficult people to kill. I, I know because I'm married to one. <laughs> I try. <laughs> Patel, he's a comedian. He is definitely a comedian for sure. But um, that must be really, really tough. Like people who got family in Palestine, like, you know, how like scary is that knowing that what's going on in that country and what can any like second you might get the phone call or yeah. some sort of communication that your family's been wiped out by a bomb or And attack. imagine being a resident of Gaza as well. Yeah, madness. Any moment, your life can just go. Kids. Yes. Playing outside, playing Newborn, football. Newborn, mothers yeah. carrying children. It's actually yeah, Everyone, scary, man. Yeah. Tried many times, couldn't kill her. <laughs> I mean, there's a dark humour there and I understand. Did Pish just laugh at that? Yeah, because he said, I tried many times with my wife and I couldn't kill her. They just keep coming back. But because, obviously he's being yeah, sarcastic. I understand, yeah. I understand why. Because oh, it's not dark human. I really, I try to get to her every time, but she uses our kids as human shields. I can never take her out. <laughs> Again, oh I understand God. the humour. But I, to be serious, uh, Bassem, about this, tonight there okay, is... I will be serious. Now, I, I, I will be serious. I was watching your interview with Ben Shapiro and I'll tell you one thing. Yeah. I think that Ben Shapiro is one of the smartest people who ever walked this earth. He's very, very smart. I follow him and I believe everything he said. And when he came on your show, his solution was, and I quote, his solution was that the solution for this is for Israel to annex Gaza and to kill as many son of bitches as possible to make sure that this Disgusting. will never happen again. And anyone anyone who called for a ceasefire will be a terrorist sympathizer so god forbid i don't want to be labeled as a terrorist sympathizer that's the thing like people that say are you know people that are openly supporting palestine people are say they're saying they're terrorist sympathizers like that's mad like they're not terrorist sympathizers they're trying to protect and stand up for a country that can't stand up for themselves. It's called being a human. Yeah. That's where it is. You know what's happening. You know the innocent that are suffering. There's people suffering from both parties, the Israelis and yeah, the people of Gaza as well. Hmm. The people of Israel, Israel, I'm sure they don't want, you know, bombs to be sent out to Gaza, but, you know, they're not in control of the country. Hmm. You've even got Jewish people going on riots saying they're against what the Zionists are doing. Hmm. So it's about human rights. That's yeah, what it is. That's what's being violated. Electric, gas, water's being cut off. You can't You can't like do that. that. Yeah, it's, you it's can't. sad. But it's happening. Yeah. And it's apparently you're a terrorist sympathizer for standing up for that. And a lot you're, of celebrities... It's called being a human. A lot of celebrities are starting to like voice out when still a lot of cele big celebrities that do support Palestine are still quiet about it. Like, not all celebrities have Did come you see out. what DJ Khaled did? No. So he's Palestinian himself. I didn't know he's Palestinian. And nice. McDonald's... Well, correct me if I'm wrong. I think he is Palestinian. And McDonald's, we all know they pump a lot of money into Israel. Right. So what did he do? He had a... Um, to promote McDonald's, because I think the stocks are going down, he had Fisher Philly, and he was eating chips as well, who was clearly promoting McDonald's. But why though? Because... Because they're losing money. So DJ Carlos started promoting McDonald's? Yeah. To try and get more money into them? Of course. Them. Oh, I'm... Um, but is he not well. Palestinian? Yeah. So but he doesn't care. He's oh, part of the Zionist. I thought you were going to tell me he's done something pro-Palestine to help them. No, he's done nothing pro-Palestine. The only thing I saw is and this was on instagram he was feeding his kids saying oh this is our dish that we have in palestine and people in the comments were saying 
you you're doing nothing. You're just showing off all this food and all this money, but you're not helping your. If own people. he did do that against his own people, he's a fucking tramp. Do you know why? Because the Zionists control him. Yeah, that's yeah, why. That's why. Uh huh. So I agree with Ben Shapiro. I think we should kill as many son of bitches as possible. Well, let me, so okay. far, but Basa, three, let me, uh, three, no, no, so, 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 so far, 3,500 people were killed, mm. including 5,000 son of bitches in the bombing of the Baptist uh, 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 hospital as we speak right now. Mm. One third of those 3,500 were children. So my question to Ben Shapiro is, how many more son of bitches do we need to kill so Ben Shapiro is happy? Okay, because but, it changes but, from but, so one let me year. Just stop it you changes there, just from say, one. Let let me just, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that. I, please, this is it. I'm, I'm, I'm really at a disadvantage here. I'm looking at a camera. I don't see you. I can hear you on my. Well, the reason ears, I'm interrupting so is I think you might be. I think, I think you're conflating different interviews with Ben Shapiro. He didn't use the phrase "sons of bitches" with me. Let me play to you what he actually said he did, on my. He did. He did. Go what? back. Go back to your interview. No, he, he, he didn't. Did. That was another interview. But let me play what he said to me here. Ben Shapiro is the guy that. Piers Morgan asked Andrew Tate about those two guys towards the end of that interview. I don't know if you remember. Mm. And then uh, Andrew Tate was saying, basically, Ben's a war mongrel who likes to send people out to war oh. and be, let people die when he has, like, hides behind his desk kind yeah. of thing. So this is the same guy they're talking mm. about now. And he's about to get played here, apparently. Well, I, frankly, I don't this believe guy. in proportionate response to terrorism. I believe that the way that you stop terrorism is with wildly disproportionate response. That doesn't mean in terms of targeting civilians. It means in terms of killing as many terrorists as humanly possible and allowing them to dictate the terms of engagement by hiding behind civilians in areas that, that they are supposedly responsible for means that the only option for Israel is to surrender to Hamas's hatred of its own citizens, its willingness to use its own children as human shields. No, no country worth its salt could ever do that. Now, that is significant, substantively different to what you said he said, right? He's talking there but, but specifically I agree, I, but, but about I Hamas agree terrorists. With him. I agree, I, I, I agree with him. The, the thing is, the question is, what is a proportionate response? Because yes. it has been different from one tier to another. So if you look to this graph, for example, this is the death of Israeli and Palestinians, and it's changing from one year to year. It's like, it's like... Look how many more Palestinians have died in comparison to Israelis. It's actually not fair. It's crazy. Look at the bars, like, it's mad. It's waiting like crypto. So my question is today, what is the going rate today for human lives? I mean, 2014 was a great year for Ben Shapiro. 88 Israelis were died, and there was 2,729 Palestinians killed on the other side. That is one Israeli for 27 uh, uh, Palestinians. That is a very good exchange rate. What I'm saying is, what is the exchange rate well, for I, today? Well, I, so I, you guys will be happy. That's my question. Well, it's not me, I, I it's not me guys. I, I don't, I'm not on either no, side No, 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 not you. Like, when I yeah. say you guys, I say, like, the people on the other side of that. I know that you, know, you don't guys. think mm. like that. You are one of the good guys. But let me... Is he though? He's not. He's been sarcastic with that. Is he though? <laughs> yeah, definitely sarcasm. Because yeah. Piers is a puppet man. Yeah. Tell you something. I mean, I'm, the reason that I'm I'm using this is that I mean, I could, I can't remember what happened in 2014, and there was no music festival. But there were, there must be something. I mean, they must do something. It is their fault. It has to be something. I mean, 2018, 300 Palestinians died. Ah, who's counting? You know. Uh, but the, the, so the thing is, what my question is, let's find what is the exchange rate for human life today so we know, expect the future death of Palestinians and we'll be happy to it. My, my response to that would be this, Bassem. I've thought carefully about this uh, because I think it's very tricky for people like me to immerse ourselves into a conflict where we're not directly involved. And I've thought carefully mm -hmm. about what I feel about this. I feel that the scale of what Hamas did on October the 7th supersedes anything else I've seen in this conflict really ever. So, You're always referred. He done that with the Tate interview where he kept bringing up October the 7th. But let me say this. He said it's the most like horrific thing he's seen out of the whole conflict. But for the last 75 years, none of that's been documented on television to that level. If that was documented, I guarantee peers will see way more horrific things than this October 7th. Not saying October 7th was, you know, it was hor it was terrible. It shouldn't have happened. But I assure... More has happened. Way more has happened. Yeah. And it's just not been documented, you know? Yeah. It's just that's all you've seen. And obviously, they're showing you a level at the point that it's at now... But I bet if we saw every single thing that happened in Palestine to the Palestinians, probably worse, you know?
It's just not been on television. That's all it is. Mm. The, the, the savagery, yes. the butchery, the slaughter of 1,300 Absolutely. people, the Absolutely. shooting of babies, the 100%. kidnapping of grandmas and so on. So if, if we can agree on that, which I think is inarguable, then the question then becomes, again, about proportion. I, I don't disagree that there's been a lot of bad stuff on both sides going back historically for decades. But if we agree that this was on a different level altogether, quite deliberately by Hamas, designed, I, absolutely. To, designed you know to provoke... I'm gonna, designed I'm, to provoke... No, here's my I'm question. Be a... Let me ask you a question. Uh -huh. and, and the question... Was, the you, you raised it earlier about proportion. <laughs> I honestly don't know what the proportionate response is. Uh, I, yes. I, I honestly don't. I, I don't. I've been watching the airstrikes so this what's week your thinking... So what, what's your question? Well, I was asked... I, well, I would ask you, if you were Israel, what would uh, you... If I was Israel. If you were Israel and that had happened to you, what would you uh -huh. think would be the appropriate way for the country to respond? I would do exactly like Israel did, kill as many people as possible since the, the, the world is letting me do it. I mean, I, I can do it because I can. You know, but the thing is, you know, what? I agree with you. And you know what? I'm going to be even ahead of you because I see the question coming. Do you condemn Hamas for the atrocities? Yes, I condemn Hamas. Mm. I condemn Hamas. I condemn Hamas. Hamas is the source of all evil. They are the reason for everything. And you know what? Let's for a minute imagine a world without Hamas. Right. What will this world look like? Mm. Let's give this world a name. And let's I know what the, the world would look like. Israel would have the whole of Palestine if Hamas wasn't around. That's my opinion. Obviously, we will never know, but I think Hamas is what we saw in the previous documentary and uh, when we was learning about the historic events. Hamas is the army, in a way, for Palestine. That's what we figured. And I feel like without Hamas, Palestine would have no one to f fight and they'll be fending, fending for themselves, literally. Agree? Fingers will never know. I mean... God is almighty. Hmm. He is protecting the Palestinians. Hence why to this day, Israel has not been able to fully take over. Why is it taking so long to take over? Bear in mind, Israel, I'm not saying it should be done now because I never want it to happen. But why is it taken over 75 years for Israel to take over Gaza? Because... They've got so Palestine. much money behind yeah. them. They've got so much weaponry behind them. And the countries. Hamas, clearly, they're not as powerful as the Israeli soldiers. Yeah, of course not. Why is it taking so long? Because God won't let it happen. Because God is behind them. And Hamas... And God is all-powerful. Is God willing. Yeah. Yeah. More powerful than the Zionism. Yeah. How at least they're defending them. Yeah. yeah. Let's name this word the West Bank. Hamas has absolutely no control in the West Bank. And this, since the beginning of this year, only through August... 37 Palestinian kids were killed. Mm. No music festival, no paragliding, no Hamas. No Hamas. Mm. Since the occupation of the West Bank, 7,000 Palestinians were killed. No music festival, no paragliding, no Hamas. Mm. I can go on and on and on and on. No, no, but you about, don't, you don't need to because in a, way, in a way you're preaching to the choir. I've, I've followed this crisis. Oh, no, for... you're not preaching. So the, the, the thing is like... I, well, in the sense I, I know, saying, I know that what you're saying has validity, of course. Of uh, course uh, Piers, Piers, by the way, Piers, 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 I am at a disadvantage here. I can hear you, I cannot see you. Mm. I am in a claustrophobic room. And so please cut, cut me some slack and don't interrupt me and interrupt my point. Sure. So, uh, because this, this is it has to be fair. Understand. Uh, because if you want to only hear your opinion, I can just condemn Hamas and go home. Mm. I can do that. So, if you, do you want to do that, or do you have a much more nuanced conversation? No, I absolutely want to have a nuanced conversation. I wasn't aware I was interrupting. I thought I was letting you speak. Amazing. But... So let's. He's I, mean, I, mean, I would say. I love how he put him in his place. Good. Because not a lot of people do that. So yeah, he, Pierce is always interrupting. That's his. People. It's a. It's a. It's a. Uh, like a technique. It's just how he is. And it makes him win arguments. It makes him look like he's winning arguments. But what about October the 7th? Yeah, that's what he keeps saying, man. I would say I really applaud Israel for doing one thing that no military force in the world does. Because I heard, I heard Ben Shapiro and I heard Ron DeSantis. And they said, they said, Israel is the only military force in the world that warns civilians before bombing them. I mean, how fucking cute. That is so nice of them. <laughs> because with this logic... If wow. Russian troops started warning Ukrainians before bombing their houses, we're cool with Putin, right? I mean, okay, Habibi, you have uh, warned them, go invade, it's fine, you have done your job. I mean, the thing is, and I understand, all, and I also heard Ben Shapiro talking about, uh, about human shield. So you remember my wife's family, they live in Gaza. So I asked them, 
I told them, when Israel gives you the nice warning, the cute warning, does Hamas force you to stay in your home so you can be bombed and use a, a, as, as human shield? You know, what, Hassan here, uh, my, my, wife's, uh, my wife's cousin, he's a, he's, a, he's a loser, you know. He, he told me, you know, when I asked him, does that happen? He told me, no. The lying son of a bitch lied to me. I told him, you don't understand. Ben Shapiro and Ron DeSantis keep saying that Israel warns you and Hamas ask you to, keep, to stay put. So I, 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 I told you, he's a loser. He never kept a job. He even like failed in all of the interviews to become like a human shield. I, I, I would believe right. Ben Shapiro. Let me ask but you At some this. point, I must be able to if ask we, you questions. If we, it's not if a we monologue agree, for if you, we agree, If we agree, if we agree that for the 14,000 casualties, I mean, who's counting, are human shield, does that mean that every single one of those civilians was standing, obscuring a military target behind them? Because that's a lot of weapons. I mean, Hamas is packing. No, of course it doesn't. It, and look, I, you know... It I doesn't, so, so, there, so there's some collateral damage. Lots of collateral damage. Yes. It's fine, yeah. You kill, you kill some to save some and then kill some more. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what Tate was saying about how it's fucked that so many people are dying through collateral damage. Mm. Like, they're literally innocent to the situation, both Israelis and Palestinians, but obviously more Palestinians are dying. Um, and it's what's twisted is, like, the Israeli force can literally have an intelligence that they think this is Hamas, uh, or Hamas people might reside in this area, Bomb they it. Just kill them. They just kill, t Assuming let's say, two thousand people. Yeah. Maybe three Hamas people might have died in that out of the two thousand that died in the large bombing. How does it even make sense? And how do you even know who's Hamas and who's not? Anyone can make up anything. There's no court justice. That they're not getting that. Put in handcuffs and go to court. Made interrogated. Made sure that Hamas then executed. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like it's just kill, 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 kill. We'll kill things. People on the way. Like is what it is. It's it's disgusting. It's so sad. Well, I, I would let I me ask you this. Again, it comes back to proportionate response. When the world yes. when the world decided it had to get rid of ISIS because of the appalling butchery they were carrying out, uh, yes. it did so by by also killing very sadly a lot of civilians along the way by doing airstrikes yes. against Places which but killing civilians ISIS are inevitable. So you my, said that in the beginning. My point is once, it's, in, it's inevitable. Yeah, but once inevitable. Israel we, once we, we, Israel has decided that they want to get rid of Hamas, mm -hmm. and Hamas is embedded with civilian yes. population. I'm very concerned about yes. what's going to happen next. I've written a column tonight saying, yeah, I remember the Iraq and, and war, the which is, I opposed, I, right? I, I, I remember all this. So my I question to you is, I know. I, what would, be, what would yeah, you think would be an appropriate response by Israel to what happened? Well, well the, these are years of disproportionate responses of Israel. Right. Did it solve the solution? Did it solve the problem? Did it, did it work before so it will work? What, what will be the surprise this time? What will be the twist that will make this work this time? What? What will be different this time? Seriously, I mean, like, this is only the last 15 mm. years. I mean, because it's too, too many pa papers. I just got this. But what, how, how will this will be different? And That's mad. That's the last 15 years, let alone the last 70 years of how and how, like, bad was it back then, probably even worse. Mm. And now it's kicking off again, obviously. The thing is, it, I am so glad. You could tell how frustrated Bamis is getting as well. Yeah. He's getting very frustrated. He's very passionate about what's going on. He's as trying well. to keep his cool at the same time, but it's yeah. hard because he's so passionate and people, it's people's lives, you know? Yeah, people are dying. In the introduction, then you mentioned the Iraq war. I applaud you, Pierce, for saying that because you were honest about it. You said that spreading lies like WMDs make mm. people look at those people as less of humans and they would accept the death of a million Iraqi, whether by shanks, no, sanctions agree. or by invasion, right? You are, you, you are a good man. This is amazing. And you know what is similar? Is when you spread the lies of 40 decapitated babies, although it was refuted. So what happens when people hear that, you know, killing babies is horrible. But when you say decapitated 40 babies, you are planting a certain image well, who has a said certain that? trigger in people's mind. Who has said huh? that? Who has said 40? Who has said that? Who has said 40 decapitated? Who has said you that? Have, you have repeat. No, no, I haven't. What? I've never said that. You haven't said on your show 40 decapitated no. babies? Never. Ben Shapiro didn't say it? No. Ron DeSantis didn't say Nobody it? Nobody has said okay, it. Okay, uh, Pierre, no, nobody haven't. said it? No. Oh, okay, okay, maybe I am wrong. 
we haven't kept up with obviously Piers Morgan's interviews that he's done. So comment below if he did or didn't, because you guys will probably know. Decapitated. Here's yeah, you're the wrong. Thing. I've never said the that. Thing, what happened? What? Ha yeah. What, uh, what, no, you're, you're wrong. But the like, thing is, when Iraq, but the thing is, the same thing is happening in Iraq. Ben Shapiro once tweeted, not even about Gaza, about the West Bank, when Israel continued to build the illegal settlement. Mm -hmm. He said, 2017, Israel likes to build things, and Arabs, not Palestine, not Hamas, mm -hmm. Arabs like to bomb crap and live in open sewage. Yeah, I thought that yeah, was very, very the, the, the Israeli thing to say. The, the, Israeli thing to say. the, oh, the Israeli defense minister, he said, those are human animals. Mm. And the thing is, Ben Shapiro should know better because, you know, long before the Holocaust, before Jewish people were thrown in the gas chambers, the Nazi propaganda called them rats. Mm. Now, as a human being, I will never accept that another human being being thrown in a, into a gas chamber, but a, a rat, mm. kill a t ten. Kill a thousand, three thousand five hundred. They are son of a bitch. They are human animals who live in open sewage and decapitate babies. And mm. because of that propaganda, Mr. Morgan, mm. that guy in Illinois, the 71 years old guy, he killed, stabbing the six years old Palestinian kid in Illinois 26 times. And he used to play with him. They used to be friends. But he went in, marching into their apartment, stabbing his mother and killing him, shouting, all Muslims could die. Yeah. It took you 80 years to change one word from Jewish to Muslim. Mm. And then you transferred your guilt to us and took away our land. Master, that let me a, ask, that, you, that, let me that, ask you a question. That deal sucks, man. Let me ask you a yeah. question. Uh, ask, how ask do him. we get from where we are now to peace? Well, first of all, you need to change the perception. Uh, Nikki Haley, the American... There will never be peace. No, not, not with where it's gone. With all the money being pumped into Israel, there will never be peace. And all the families that have been and killed. And the Western world is allowing it to happen, just sitting back watching everything. Never. Mm. Never. And it's gone worse and worse and worse. And all the lives that have been taken away, you think people are just going to forget. It's no. gone way beyond the point. I'm out of, you know... People's daughters, sons, mothers, grandmothers, you know, everything. Lives. Lives have... Animals. Yeah, everything has been gone. They're not just going to forget their land has been bombed and destroyed. Like, even if peace was made somewhere in writing, in people's minds and hearts, there'll never be peace and they'll always... War would always continue and follow somehow. American presidential candidate said, we are in Israel in this because it's a fight between evil, uh, good and evil. Now, if you already decided someone is good, he can do no evil. And if you decided someone is evil, it's good to kill them. Killing them is good. You see, and, and the thing is, it is, it is not like something new. I mean, I, I, I look at history and I see, I'm sorry to say, and I'm sorry to say this, but Westerners has, has always dealt like this with indigenous people. You first treat them like savages, you know, Native American, First Nation, Aboriginal. They're savages. Kill all the savages. And yeah. then when they're almost extinct, you start feeling sorry for them, you know, like animals. So maybe, maybe the solution is that we kill as many Palestinians as possible so that few of them that remains do not bother you. And you maybe keep, Netanyahu, you keep talking about, for, it, yeah, for another Hussain, 100 years, let me just challenge he'll you become a tree hugger. Let me just challenge you on this. And he will campaign All right, for, listen, for, for, for you, you preserving keep, the three You keep talking about yeah, Westerners go. like me. OK, so let me return the favour, OK? Hamas yes. is dedicated to the complete eradication of Jewish people. I am they, not the spokesman for Hamas. I'm not saying you are. Why do you, why do you keep, I'm not saying I'm you are. I'm not the spokesman. You're talking I to me. I fucking hate them. Basen, Fuck Hamas. You are, you are, some Hamas. No, no, are you happy? You're missing my point. You're talking in a generalised okay. way about people in the West who always talk about Arabs as savages. I don't. No, no, no. I'm talking I about have. America. I'm, about I actually Western led the media. campaign. I'm talking about I led the media I'm, campaign listen, in this country I'm, against the Iraq War. OK, so I don't you see... Are, you, you, I don't you see people the in the Middle ones, East Pierce. as savages. You but what are I would one say of the is, good ones. But what I, I would say is... I'm not talking about you. You're great. No, no, it's not about me You're being amazing. great. We love you. It's about It's about the way Hamas behaved on October the 7th was like savages, like a pack of savages. It was the worst atrocity against Jewish people yes. since the Holocaust. There has to be- I think Piers needs a history lesson. He keeps going back to October the 7th, like nothing before has happened. It's because he's not seen it. So in his head, he needs he's to not sit down and have a history lesson. Because he seemed very shocked and didn't know what to say so when Bamas showed him the chart. Graph, yeah. yeah.
And if he's that traumatized from uh, October the seventh, which yeah is a traumatic thing. Yeah, we're not taking that away. Imagine what he would be like if he found out about every other date that craziness has happened, and that chart shows the murders mm-hmm. and the lives. And that was gone. only the last fifteen, 15 years. years. Yeah. Imagine the last. That's the, that's years. the scary part. To be, of course, there has to be a response. They, so my they question should be for eradicated. You is, my question for you is, notwithstanding the, the history, Basim, what is the proportionate response? But I don't know. But there's no Hamas in the West Bank, and they're still dying there. So what's mm. your excuse? Mm. I don't have any excuse. The, okay. What's what's your explanation? Sorry, sorry. Uh, my earpiece went down. Mm. I, okay. I listen. I don't make any pretense that this hasn't been a massive problem okay, wh- 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 uh, between Palestine I, 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 and Israel I, I, yeah. going back to the mid forties. We all know this, right? I, I, I'm, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Piers, Piers, Piers. Listen, I'm not saying that you're making excuses, but if you are adopting a certain point of view, mm. you have to at least defend it. I'm telling you, there is no Hamas in the West Bank. What is what is the excuse? Mm. Not your excuse. What is the excuse to kill those people? It's true. Why well, it's, listen, this Gone question quiet. of proportionality is one that... No, it, no, no, answer my question. I've been answering your question. You answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Oh, Piers, you're such a puppet, man. The second a valid, valid fucking point is made, you just go quiet. Don't know what to say. Don't want to get cancelled. It's you're not scared. my job to answer your you're question. You're scared to uh, upset your bosses and your superiors so that we don't lose your job and get cancelled by, you know, the... Uh, dumb guys, basically, should we say. And for that reason, you just divert the question. Uh, my reaction is that guy's face right now. <laughs> yeah, same. He don't want to upset the Zionists. No. Nope. It's not. Okay, not your, not your job. Not. I, I, I agree with I'm you. I'm more it interested in you, job. who has family in Gaza, who's an Egyptian I'll tell you, I'll tell you in, in the Middle I'll tell you East, right? I'm more interested in what you, you have to say. Let, okay, I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. But this is a talk show. Yeah, so clearly there'll be questions going back, back and, forth. and forth. This is not a one-sided talk. It's not an interrogation. Yeah. I think Hamas is the problem, okay? Right. Now, let's say agree. Hamas is removed. Let's Hamas... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm agreeing with everything. Hamas. Was, I, you want me to go to Hamas? <laughs> He's so Arab. Hamas, <laughs> Hamas, Hassan. Hamas, Hassan. Abdul Karim. Mohammed, Hussein. All of them. All them brothers. They wait. I can't He's hear the, uh, the earpiece. Damn, okay. Oops. It's gone. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, I, I didn't need I think, I think okay. just go, go back. Is he there? You go back. You go back. Can you, you hear go me? Back. Okay, go. Thank you, guys. Can you hear Basim? Yeah, yeah, now I can hear it. Okay. So the, here's the thing. Can you hear? Okay. Yeah. So, Isaac, let's say, for example, Hamas ceased mm. to exist. Okay? Do you hear me? Yes. Yeah, Hamas ceased to exist today. Now, right now, in Palestine, mm. in West Bank and, and, uh, and Gaza, 20% of Palestinians go through Israeli prison system, whether mm. imprisonment, whether uh, 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 interrogation, whether torture. And the rest of them, they live a life of daily loss of land, of homes, of life, mm. and they are, they are suffocated by this. So let me ask you something. If you are a Palestinian living into these conditions for decades, mm. would, you, would you sympathize with your oppressor or sympathize with the people who claim they resist them, even if they are terrorists. I have made I have made no secret that I think the conditions Palestinians have had to exist under are completely unacceptable. Yeah. I've said that for years. So the question then becomes: okay. How do you forge peace between two warring parts of that region, who for decades have approached peace, in my view, with mutual sledgehammers, with no actual desire to have peace? And I think it comes down in the end to great leadership. Well, and well, I. I- have you noticed Piers didn't answer his question and just fully diverted it? Yeah, he's not going to answer the question. He's not going to, yeah, because there's no... The only answer to that is saying what Israel's doing is it's killing wrong. innocent yeah. civilians with no Hamas in that West Bank area. And he just can't say it because he knows he's... I don't think there's yeah, great leadership... Yeah, but, but, I don't think... Well, hang on, let me make my point. I don't think there's great leadership on either side. Where is the Nelson Mandela figure here to come through all this Nelson, hatred N- N- Nelson, on both sides? Nelson Mandela... Yeah, well, where is that Nelson figure? Mandela, N- N- Nelson Mandela actually have criticised Israel for being a horrible state. All of the South African uh, I, I <laughs> activists know. have actually my point is, Israel. My, uh, uh, my point is yes. about how he, how he responded to a country that was so divided. 
is a template. Is a template. I, I, don't, I, 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 a template for how you I, get to peace, isn't it? I, 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 I haven't met Nelson Mandela, so I wouldn't know. Mm. But like, I, 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 there is a point. There's a there's a very important point here. You know, I want to understand what is the logic of Israel carpet bombing Gaza. I mean, if there is a logic, if it is a good, if this will make Israel safe, I want to hear the logic. So if they continue bombing, what are they hoping to achieve? Well, what, we, know what what we know what their stated aim is. Their stated aim is to eradicate yes. and wipe out Hamas. They believe Hamas no, are, yeah, living, but... are living predominantly in northern Gaza. They also are aware they're living amongst civilians. So it's an incredibly difficult okay. thing. As, so, I said, as I said so, in my so monologue, so, 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 you know, it is so very, very so difficult to see how I, they I, do I, this I, without I, massive collateral if damage. I can, so if I can understand this correctly, basically Israel is doing this to pressure the Palestinian community in Gaza to turn against Hamas. Is that right? I'm sure that's part of it, yes. That's part of it. So this is exactly what terrorist organizations do, because terrorist organizations will have no chance beating a whole nation in battle. So they terrorize and they kill the civilians in order to spread fear and terror so they can turn against their government to change their policy mm. or to resign. You have just compared Israel with ISIS. No, I haven't. You have. You have. You have, and you, you have, have slipped up. You literally have. Yep. Yeah. Because that's what they do. That's that's it's yeah. a it's a strategy in that war. That is what you call a terrorist. Yeah. And that's what not they're doing. innocent people who have no funding behind them, no weapons, no one to yeah. protect them. Yeah. He got him good. Yeah. I don't. Well I don't see any comparison between. It's going to be ISIS. the headlines tomorrow. Piers yeah, Morgan, no, not, Israel is ISIS. Lots only ISIS. only amongst people who weren't listening. The comparison, which is more <laughs> apposite, him. is ISIS and Hamas. They are both nihilistic yes, terror groups absolutely. intent on killing as many Jewish people and others as they can possibly kill. And you, you, can't, what? I'm you, gonna can't, do you can't get I'm peace gonna do with so people like that. Absolutely. You know what? I'm going to do something that nobody done on your television. Mm. You know what I'm going to do I'm on your episode? I'm going to do I am going to pretend that I'm an Israeli citizen. I'm going to put my, my, myself in the, in the place of an Israeli settler in the kibbutz. And I want to speak to my prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu. Mm -hmm. Mr. Benjamin Netanyahu, I have voted for you because you have promised us peace and prosperity and security. On the 7th of October, those son of bitches Hamas, they went into the fence that is regularly heavy, heavily guarded. Usually if there's like a, a, a dove that comes close to it, it will be shot. Mm -hmm. Those people went in and they went for six hours before IDF forces was deployed, killing our friends, our families, kidnapping our grandmothers and babies, and went in. I want to ask you, Mr. Prime Minister, after you have fractured the Israeli community and you have fucked our courts, our Supreme Courts, what are you doing with the money being given to you to the United States? Also, you are carpet bombing Gaza with absolutely no regard to our hostages, our people. I heard a rumor in the kibbutz that you're doing that as an, you let that happen to, as an excuse to carpet bomb Gaza, so you push them into Sinai. And I didn't believe that. That's like, not my prime minister. He can never do that. And then I watched an interview for Danny Ayelon. He was your chief advisor. He was also the Israeli ambassador to the United States. And you know what he said, Mr. Prime Minister? He said that the solution for those Palestinians is to go into a vast land of Sinai and live into 10 cities temporarily, huh? temporarily, wink, wink, hmm. until we build Gaza again, and then we invite you back. Ah, so we've seen this movie before. So and I, and when I saw this, I couldn't explain to my fellows in the kibbutz how come our Israeli government is trading human lives for another piece of land? So as an Israeli citizen, I need to hold my Israeli government accountable. And as an American citizen, I want to know all of these money that we are giving to Israel. We're giving them $4 billion every year. Mad. Joe Biden said it's the best investment they ever, America ever done. Well, I, if I am in the... In of course he's going to say that because he wants the American people to support it and... In his head, he knows Zionist. He's probably getting a deal with the Zionist movement, mate. Of course. In the place of Joe Biden, I would say, sorry, don't speak. Uh, yeah, the, I, I, would, I would say if I was Joe Biden, I would go down and whisper in the ears of Netanyahu and tell them I hate bad investments. They haunt me, you know, like Littlefinger in Game of Thrones. But the thing is, the thing is, this is the problem. Israel always victimizes itself. And I have never seen a victim putting their oppressor under siege and bombing them 24-7. Israel wants you to believe 
that they are the victim. Is, dealing with Israel is so difficult. It's like being in a relationship with a narcissistic psychopath. He fucks you up, and then he makes you think it's your fault. All right, you Basim. look at Israel as Superman, <laughs> but they're really Homelander. Basim. Well, they are like... They're, <laughs> you, they, hey, yo, uh, Homelander. <laughs> uh, the boys, what yeah. a show that was. They are shooting Basim, fish I want to say in one a thing. and I they are annoyed with the splashes. Basim, I want to <laughs> say two good. things. One, if you could just slightly manage your language. We are uncensored, but if you keep swearing... I, I'm very sorry. We I have am, to apologise to viewers. So you may sorry. be offended by that. I apologise. Um, but I understand I passions run high, so let's not get too bogged down about the odd swear I, I word. I apologise to the um, viewers. I apologise to the viewers for my language. I, my second question the, is this. The, after the, the sight of, uh, of dead civilians. After the break, we have the managing director of The Daily Wire, which is Ben Shapiro's company. We were going to interview him on his own, but he's happy to come on and talk with you directly if you are oh. prepared to stay. Well, of course, I, I, I can stay, but again, I am... <sighs> fuck this. I am in a disadvantage, and I would like to have my space to respond. OK, we'll come back after the break. I do, stay I, there, I, 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 because, because Because here's the thing. There's Basim, two things we, we've got to go to a break. Before, right? When we come back from the break, we, we'll be you and Jeremy I, I, Boring my, my, from my, the Daily Wire. My, 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 I have news We're taking that. a short break, Basim. I'll be back. Welcome back to Uncensored. For more on the situation in Israel, I'm joined now by the CEO and co-founder of The Daily Wire, Ben Shapiro, is part of that. Jeremy Boring. Uh, Jeremy, thank you very much indeed for joining me. I'm sorry we demoted you earlier to mere MD. You are the CEO and co-founder. Uh, you know Ben Shapiro better than anyone, really. Uh, I did a big interview with Ben, obviously, the other night, um, which went around the world um, and has sparked a big reaction, including from uh, our guest, Bassam Youssef, who's still with us. First of all, you've been listening to, to Bassam and what he's been saying. What's your response? Well, first of all, I make it a point not to speak for Ben Shapiro. He's got a 20 IQ points on me and speaks for a living professionally. So he's much better prepared to defend himself. But as his business partner, as his best friend, I, I do feel like I have to respond to the things that Bassam was just saying. Uh, first of all, the question of how many sons of bitches have to be killed in order to end this conflict, I, I suppose that the answer is as many of them as it takes. That doesn't mean that I or Ben or any decent person in their right mind is happy with the killing of civilians. Uh, I posted of course you are. at the very beginning of this conflict that the fact that he just said that just shows he don't give a fuck, man. Yeah. He they will want to wipe out everyone. Of course. Like, the mindset. A, a woman or a child blown apart in Gaza is just as tragic as a Jewish baby killed in one of the settlements. That doesn't mean that Israel's actions and the actions of Hamas are morally equivalent. You know, the tragedy is the tragedy, but the moral equivalency is nonsense. If you if you entered Israel with the express purpose of targeting and murdering civilians with your own hands in cold blood, that is not comparable to Israel bombing targets in the Gaza Strip and killing civilians as a terrible, tragic consequence. War, war is terrible. Basically saying, what I got off that is he's saying Israeli lives are more valuable than Palestinian citizens. That's what I got from what he just said there, because he's basically saying you going into... The Israel with the uh, mind to cold bloodedly kill people is it's even worse than Israel bombing, bombing thousands of people, and that's why he's saying it will kill as many, like to kill as many until it stops. But that's a disgusting mindset, and that's why wars happen because these like, guys like him and Ben Shapiro chatting shit behind the fucking desk yeah. when they wouldn't go Just to war Andrew themselves. Said. Literally, that's so disgusting. That mm. mindset, the fuck. War is an awful thing. That's why decent people don't lightly engage in war and why Hamas should not have incited this war. You know, we can talk about the history of the Israeli conflict. I'm not a professional political commentator. I'm a, I'm a CEO, I'm a screenwriter, uh, and I'm certainly not Ben Shapiro. I'm not here to discuss the history of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, but we all saw what happened on October 7th. And the idea that Israel was not going to react severely to that, or that Israel should not react severely to that, is ludicrous. And the Jeremy, idea let me ask you, the idea that Ben the Shapiro question. should be a moderating voice, mm. that Ben Shapiro should be, what, saying, no, Israel should not respond mm. in this situation, that's nonsense. No, let me ask you, though, Jeremy, what, I mean, the question which I think is the big question, what is a proportionate response to that outrage on October the 7th, which is the worst attack on Jewish people since the Holocaust? Uh, what is proportionate, if it's true, as reports there... are suggesting tonight, that there may have been a hospital hit by an Israeli strike and up to 500 people or more have died, that would yeah. seem to me, if that is verified, and it's not verified yet, you know, we don't know exactly what has happened other than there's been a hit on this hospital. But if that is verified to have been an Israeli strike, 
that will strike many people as disproportionate. Certainly. Well, first of all, I don't know what a proportionate response is or why we would want it. I suppose a proportionate response would be for 3,000 Israelis to go through the fence, gun down innocent Palestinian women and children, burn their bodies, burn them alive, take hostages, rape their women. No one wants a proportionate response. No, no moral person could possibly call for a proportionate response. But bombing them and killing about 30,000 of them is not comparable and less proportionate than what he just described. Bombing is straight. You're destroying everything. Yeah. It might not be as... Ugh, he's trying to say it's not as cold-blooded. War is war. Death is death. Like Regardless of how it happens, if you're pressing a button to drop a bomb... You've literally been. But that's. You're a murderer I feel like life. dropping a bomb is even worse. You're sending off a bomb. You're not face. In a day, killing is not right. Yeah, whichever way. So yeah. I'm not saying one way is better than the other. But you know, when the Hamas went and they killed the innocent lives, which is ter- which is wrong. Yeah, that is disgusting. wrong as well. Which shouldn't have happened. We don't agree to that. But it is face to face. Whereas this bombing. You're just there in the comfort in your own zone. Press a button and you're Press blowing up. Press a button, up. gone. And, and these people are not aware. And you're di- killing a lot of people. Killing like, either way, way is more. very wrong. Yeah. But a bomb is just... You're killing way more people as yeah. well. Way more lives. Land, lives. Everything. The purpose of war is to defeat your enemy. The West has, in my lifetime, forgotten the purpose of war because the true cost of war is so terrible. The last time the West engaged in war and won it was World War II, and they did it through incredible brutality. They did it by bringing their enemies to heel. That is not a thing to that's not a thing to rah rah about. That's not a thing to look forward to. As I said, all decent people should avoid war. But I think the sort of lie of the post World War II, the post war consensus lie, is that somehow war, uh, in which you kill a bunch of people and don't secure victory is morally superior to war where you do secure victory. I would say that the only way to morally justify a war is to win it. Otherwise, your ar- the very argument that brought you into the war, this enemy must be defeated, ends up being proven a lie. I mean, Afghanistan, I think ever- America had every right to go into Afghanistan. Uh, the Taliban was harboring Osama bin Laden and al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda flew planes into buildings in the United States, killed thousands of our citizens, uh, brought the nation into untold agony, pain, and horror. America had every right morally to go in and destroy the Taliban and destroy Al-Qaeda. Yeah, but I would argue... So now, in our last video, I asked if, God forbid this ever happens, a country was to come to the UK and try to wipe us out, would we be classed as terrorists for fighting back? And he just justified what I just said. He yeah. said America had every right to go yeah, that's and how defend themselves. They'll flip the script. So that's the same thing that's happening with Gaza and Israel. So this is where Hamas has come because they are the fighters for the Palestinian, but because it's not their team. Yeah, team, they're classed as terrorists. They're classed as terrorists. Yeah, and I think the world forgets that Palestine. It's not just Muslims residing there. Yeah, it's not because they're always linking Muslims and terrorism. But there's Jews that live there. There's Christians, Christians that live there yeah. as well. It's not just Muslims. Yeah, exactly. So he just... Literally said what you were saying. Yeah, he answered video. my question. Yeah. So was the Americans terrorists as well at that point? Because they fought back? Well, apparently not because obviously they are defending themselves. No, they're, but they're terrorists as well. I'm sorry. In, in there's our, any American in, viewers here, but... <laughs> but, the, but the people, yeah, in terms of the army, yeah, uh, yeah 100%. Okay, but the Jeremy. Taliban now, but the Taliban now rules well, in my, Afghanistan. That's my the point. war was not won. But that's my point, actually. I've done a column about this tonight uh, for the Sun here in the UK, which is mm-hmm. I I was editor of a newspaper when the Iraq War happened. I uh, opposed it very aggressively as the editor I of the recall. paper, um, and sadly we were borne out by events. It was a complete disaster, the Iraq War, in my view. It was illegally contested, I think. Um, and the consequences were appalling in terms of loss of life, a million people, in terms of ISIS being allowed to breed and create their merry hell around the world, in terms of complete dismantlement of, of Iraq itself as a, as a functioning country. Uh, and I think Afghanistan, again, 20 years of you know attacking an enemy, which is now running the country again, seemed to me, again, to be kind of pointless. And I do wonder whether Israel, in its blind fury, which I completely understand, has thought through the consequences of actually launching a full air 
ground and sea offensive into Gaza as to actually what happens at the end of that. Well, I suppose Israel wasn't really given the opportunity to fully contemplate what the consequences of that action might be. That's what I was saying. I was saying I feel like Israel, obviously what happened, again, I've always said this, what happened on the 7th was disgusting and 100% of response should have happened. But I feel what Andrew Tate said as well during his one, he feels the response of Israel is very emotional and very fury like it was very obviously because they're so angry at what's happened they just action they did not talk to no one they did not have a conversation with palestine about they said fuck that bombs are going like they did not even think twice Mm -hmm. and that's the scary part um i feel like if you know more a bit more time was taken i'm sure they could have found some sort of ground to you know make the situation deal with the situation in a less harmful way but they said nah no, but their goal is to wipe out yeah, of course. And they the use, Palestinians. That's their goal. So it's more of a reason for them to go. Yeah, of course. They gave them more of a forward. reason to say, yeah, like, right, how the time. dare you touch our property? How dare you touch yeah. our civilians? Yeah. That's exactly what went through their mind. More of a reason for them to attack because they're saying, oh, look at us. We're innocent. We got attacked. So this is what we're doing to justify yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. They didn't care. And that's what the, I forgot his name, the other guy that was talking, the Arab guy, the comedian Bamis. guy, him. He was saying that as well, yeah. that they used it more as, an as a... Excuse. And basically, they're, they're the ones that are oppressing Palestine, but being victim, he's saying, I've never seen victims being so oppressive and attacking. Mm. The victim is the one that's getting bombed, though, normally, but they're playing the victim when they're the one doing the they're damage. They're the victim with all the money behind because them. Because Israel didn't instigate this war. This war was instigated by a horrible terrorist attack on Israel, and a state is put in a position where it has... To- Israel didn't instigate this war. So who started it 75 years ago? Yeah. Did the little Palestinians come and say, hello, we want to start a war? Of course not. To respond. Now, one might argue that the very fact that Israel has yet to actually launch their ground invasion means that they are actually making a calculation about what the cost will be, what victory looks like. Any rational person, any decent person can engage in a conversation about What is the appropriate response for Israel? Of course they can. Uh, But this sort of moral equivalency thing, I don't think is a sign of decency to engage in a conversation about moral equivalency. Let me bring uh, Basim back in. You've been listening to this, Basim. What's your response to what Jeremy's been saying? I'm I'm sorry, I didn't catch the gentleman's name. It's Jeremy Boring. He's the chief executive of The Daily Wire and co-founder with Ben Shapiro of The Daily Wire. Hi, Jeremy. Please say hello to Ben Shapiro and please tell him that I do think he is the smartest person to ever walk the earth. Thank you so much. So as response to Jeremy, uh, I, 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 I agree with everything you said. I mean, what is disproportionate? I mean, do you think Jeremy looks like Dwight? Dwight from The Office. If you should Google <laughs> that guy. Google it. <laughs> that you, he just used the uh, examples from Second World War and America showing that civilian casualty is, uh, uh, I mean, I, I heard his voice. He was very sad and he, as he was telling us, it is so inevitable to kill so many civilians because it's something that we cannot avoid. I hear the sadness in his voice and I know that it's a very difficult decision to kill all of these civilians because that's for a higher cause. And I understand, but my question, I I have two questions. The question is, how can you justify the killing in the West Bank where Hamas does not exist? And if the disproportionate response during the, over all of these years have actually worked what will be new this time that did not happen before? I okay. just want to... That, 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 that was my question. Okay, that Basim, was my question. Uh, I'm going okay. to so, ask... So, so, so now, so so Basim, na- so now if to... I ask the question, can I, can I say something on my side? Well, a little you've, bit personal? No, Basim, with respect, a little bit ha- personal? Basim, with respect, I gave you uh, half the show to have your side. Jeremy's had a lot less time. Uh, I'm going to have to You want me on. to leave? Basim, I'm going to have stay? to I'm going to have to let you go because we've been on air with you for 40 minutes Okay, bye-bye. But listen, bye bye. bye I would bye. like to talk to you again, bye and bye. thank you for joining the program. I appreciate it. Oh, by by by, by the way, my, my my wife's family is is all right, and they sent us a house. It's it's bombed. It's beautiful. It's it's going to be a good uh, uh, like Halloween theme. So well, thank you. I'm very sorry for what your family are going through in Gaza. And I mean, oh, very sincerely. By the way, I don't know. I, nasty, I don't know man. my. Fa- I don't know. Him, by the way, I don't. I haven't actually met them. They didn't even come to my wedding. They couldn't because they are stuck in Gaza. Okay. And she never saw them because, you know, Gaza is not a destination. Basim, I, as I say, I, we, we, we hear their voices. And it's, uh, they, they die. It's fine. It's I'm, fine. Basim, I wish your family all the very best. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate right. it. I, I don't. Thank you.